we have our second speaker, 11 year old Bhagavat from Hyderabad. Um, Bhagavat is an avid reader and he loves to read uh, all kinds of books, both fiction as well as non fiction. And apart from mathematics, he loves English, he loves history, uh, he loves drawing, he plays uh, the Veena, and he's also passionate about the martial art form karate. And over a period of time, he got interested in cryptography and he started reading more about the subject. So in this talk, Bhagavad is going to share about some amazing aspects that he gathered about cryptography over the past few months. Over to you, Bhagavad. Uh, yes, thank you, sir, for the introduction. So am I audible? Yes. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Bhagavad. So today I'm going to present to you my talk on cryptography. So today I'll be discussing about uh, mainly about four WH questions. So what is cryptography? When did people start using cryptography? How was it used? And what is the relationship between mathematics and cryptography? So I'll also include some crazy and cool facts also on cryptography. So uh, with a humble note, this content is uh, based on the perspective of a school kid. So not much will be available. So uh, let's now start our journey to the land of cryptography. So what is cryptography? So basically cryptography is the study of sending secure and safe messages. So it's also the method of protecting information using communi or communication using codes. So basically there are two types of cryptography which uses keys. So those are symmetric key cryptography. The first one is the symmetric key cryptography. So basically uh, in symmetric key cryptography, uh, both the sender and receiver share a single key. So the sender uses this key to encrypt the message and then, uh, and then he'll send the cipher text or the coded message to the receiver. The receiver applies the same key the sender uses and he decrypts the message and recovers the plain text. So uh, any third person might not hack it because he or she might not have the uh, another key which both of the send both the sender and the receiver possess. So the second is the asymmetric key cryptography. So uh, you can imagine it like this. So uh, we uh, so there there's a home and there is also a letter box. So every day the postman comes, open the lid of the letter box, and then puts in the letter. But then he cannot access the letter from inside of, uh, of the house. So what do we do? We open the lock uh, through. So we can open the lock and then we uh, take out the message. So that way, so the postman is the sender. So he has one public key, so which is available to contacts of the uh, receiver. And the, re uh, the receiver has the private key which has uh, all information about personal information like tra bank transactions or Gmail or email account passwords and etc. So only the receiver can access his messages and the private information while the sender can only send the message but cannot access any private information. So I consider this, this asymmetric key cryptography more safer than the symmetric type of symmetric key cryptography. So along with asymmetric key cryptography, another function which does not use keys is used. So it's basically called as the hash function. So in this, any plain text like, let's see, hello is converted into a long series of numbers and letters. So I converted into a series of letters based on their placing in the alphabetic order. And then the receiver uh, applies the asymmetric key cryptography. So he uses his own private key to decrypted. So when it's being sent in the form of this coded message, any third person can only receive it as the coded message, even if he manages to hack through it. So this coded value is called as the final value or the hash value. So the term cryptography derives from the Greek words cryptos, meaning hidden, and graphias, meaning writing. So cryptography uses very hard codes. So for example, uh, in a common man or layman's term, potatoes mean a vegetable. But while in the term of an enigma cryptographer during the World War II, it may mean grenades. 
So many sets of mathematical algorithms are used to encrypt a coded message in cryptography. So these are me personnel, they use the cryptography in mathematical form to crack open codes, which may mean threat to their country or to send encrypted messages to their databases, to their bases. So some, uh, these are some of the features of cryptography. So I'm not getting into much detail. So those are confidentiality. The messages have to be secret. Uh, integrity, they have to be non-corrupted. Uh, uh, then there is a process called as authentication in which the user, uh, the user will be identified. And then there's also another process or assurance called as non-repudiation. So someone cannot deny that he or she sent the message or he or she did not receive, send or he or she did, uh, received or did not receive. So let's see how the olden time, in the olden times, people used cryptography and why. So the art of cryptography is believed to have come along the art of writing. So ancient civilizations all used forms of message concealments in peace and war. So uh, the earlier people used methods called as ciphers to encrypt and decrypt messages. So the surprising fact is that ciphers are even used nowadays. So the Egyptians used disordered hieroglyphics uh, the Greeks used another form of cryptography called as steganography. Uh, then uh, the Spartans used uh, skytail ciphers. So the Romans used the Caesar shift cipher. And even we Indians use cipher devices such as Kautilya Mulavedia and the Katapayadi numeric system. Uh, so let's see how the Egyptians used hieroglyphics. So these disordered hieroglyphics date back about 4,000 years ago. So in this, each picture was replaced by a different picture for communication between two Egyptian rulers or pharaohs. So one of the most historic, uh, one of the most popular historical artifact which uses hieroglyphics is the Rosetta Stone. So it was found in 1799 by Napoleon Bonaparte soldiers. So it was written in three ancient languages, Demotic, which, is a, was, which was an ancient Egyptian language, hieroglyphics, and Greek. So it basically praised King Ptolemy V, the king of Egypt. So uh, these uh, disordered hieroglyphics were also called as simple substitution ciphers. So in which each uh, picture was replaced or each letter was replaced by a different letter. So some simple hieroglyphic codes are, so an image of for a lion stood for the letter L, an image for a bird, image of a bird stood for the letter A, uh, a square for the letter P, and uh, yeah. So the Greeks used another form of cryptography which was very advanced. So it was called as teganography. So it was uh, in this process, basically no, non-ordinary messages were hidden in ordinary sentences or pictures. So uh, it, the first believed mention of uh, the use of steganography is when Herodotus, so he was a Greek writer, so he narrated two steganographic messages in his stories. So he marked the name steganography. So another recorded use of steganography was in the year 1499, by Johannes Prithemius. So he, in his book called Steganographia, he uses uh, the, a form of stega, he uses cryptography and steganography, but the book was disguised as a book about magic. So let's see how we Indians use cryptography. So we Indians use different, many different kinds of cryptography. Some of them were the Kautilyam cipher, the Mulavedia cipher, and the Katapayadi system. So, and great example of the Mulavedia cipher is in the incident of the great Indian epic, Mahabharata. So, Duryodhana was planning to burn the Pandavas alive and had also made arrangements to send Pandavas to Varnavata, where a house made up of inflammable substances were being prepared. So, Vidura learned of the plan and, res and resorted to talk secretly and warn Yudhishthira about the conspiracy. So he talked and everybody in front of everybody present 
in a uh, cryptographic code so it was a it was the dialect called as malaysia so none other than yudhishthir ra could understand the coded message so no one else thought it was a very great one so let's see how the uh, how cryptography became most popular in the term of world war 2 so it was cryptography was used very extensively during the years of world war 2 so the most popular of the cipher devices in used during the world war 2 was the enigma so enigma used very different difficult codes uh, in codes so basically for example uh, in the term of a common man or layman a turtle basically meant a amphibian while in the term of enigma in the term of enigma a turtle means tanks So around December 1932, Marian Bryovsky. So he was a mathematician and cryptanalyst. So a person, a cryptanalyst is a person who uh, breaks cryptographic codes. So uh, Marian Bryovsky was worked at the Polish Cipher Bureau, and he used the theory of permutations in which he countered the number of possibilities the code could be arranged in, and he finally broke the Enigma code. So another great. a uh, personality who broke the enigma code was alan turing so he was a british cryptanalyst and he built a machine or a cryptanalyst machine called as bomb to break the code of enigma so some people think that by cracking this enigma code alan shortened the war by 4 years and saved about 14 million lives so then the japanese used another secure cipher device called as purple by the us army So another in another cryptanalysis project called as magic the US army broke the code of purple So let's see how do we use cryptography nowadays So you may have observed that always a message pops up in WhatsApp saying that our calls and messages are encrypted So they basically mean that our calls or messages cannot be hacked by a third personality So email clients so those are people who use email so we are email clients so we use cryptography though unknowingly to secure our passwords so in the google chrome browser so uh, when we log into a website uh, while sign in to chrome so the google chrome encrypts our username and password with a secret key or the a private key which is only known to our device which contains very valuable information then it sends a very obscure copy or a very uh, less detailed copy to, of your data to google so uh, you can imagine that uh, if all the cryptographic engines or functions stop working for a day so it uh, the modern life will stop so bank transactions wouldn't run through and uh many people might hack into other people's private messages and my, our credit or debit cards passwords might be hacked so you can imagine it so nowadays armies use a method called as the brute force method to crack open codes so it may be done in the form of, form of uh, programming or codes so in this people use one code after another until trying all possible combinations until they reach the correct code and voila they crack open the code so sometimes uh, even some people who want to hack into our private information use this method so to secure that otps are given so under the time limit of maybe 59 seconds otps will be sent to our phone they may be six digit or four digit so uh, a third personality might have to try it for a very long time to break open a code which is about six digits so by the time we could have sent our otp we could have typed in the otp so let's see the relationship between mathematics and cryptography so the permutation theory is used in cryptography and the number theory is also used so it basically explores the properties of numbers in cryptography and factorization so business computer networks use this method of factorizations so business computer networks hold in a uh, hold information of transactions or business information so they are encrypted encrypted using uh, factorizations of very large numbers so the key to their network will be the factorization of a very large number 
so the unique factorization for that uh, huge number would be the key to the business network so let's see uh, about two cool facts so uh, so there was a cryptologist called as alexander de agapev so cryptologists are person who create cryptographic codes so in 1939 he wrote a book called as codes and ciphers so he included the few challenge ciphers in the behind of the book for uh, for some people to try to solve those codes but one major problem occurred he himself forgot the key to the codes and until today till this day no one knows how to translate them so it was cancelled out of future editions from his book so it's a mystery and then so this is a puzzle i would like all of you to solve so on april 1893 sir arthur conan doyle you might be familiar with him so he published his book called as sherlock holmes the adventures of the glorious cop so he published along with it along with a book called as the memoirs of sherlock holmes so he used the steganographic messages in this book in the story so uh, the steganographic message simply read the supply of game for london is steadily going up uh, headkeeper hudson we believe has now told to receive all orders for fly paper and for preservation of your hand fees in life yeah so the message simply read the game is up so hudson has told all so it the other sentence was fly for your life so it led to the death, death of a, another protagonist in this book his name was travers senior so it was that deadly the simple message uh, so let's see the summary so in this talk we basically discussed about what is cryptography the history of cryptography how is it used and relationship between mathematics and cryptography we also discussed some cool facts so thank you uh, any questions thank you thank you bhagwat for that wonderful presentation Thanks. and uh, uh, the last slide was an icing on the cake <laughs> so uh if those those of you who have questions please do a raise hand and we can unmute you and you can ask your questions right starting with siddharth uh, i have two questions i have a question in the comment can you go back to the previous slide a previous slide okay the thank you slide basically the yeah. thank you slide okay so in the thank you slide i saw I, I saw cryptographic message twenty eight one fourteen eleven zero zero twenty five five twenty one. Yeah, that I think that's cryptography for thank you and zero zero means space. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, so here's my question. Uh, can you can you repeat what asymmetric crypto uh, asymmetric cryptography? Yeah, sure. So. basically you can imagine it as uh, like there's a home and there's a letter box outside it so a postman delivers uh, a letter so he opens the shaft and he puts the letter in but he cannot access other information without the key to the lock so only we have the key to the lock so we open it from the other side and uh, access our information along with the letter so what the postman is he is the sender so you can imagine him as the sender and we are the receiver so the sender uses a public key which is acts so he can send messages to anyone he has contact with and also the receiver has contact with but then he cannot access the files or tran bank transactions of the receiver that only the receiver can access so uh, basically the receiver uses his private key to open the Uh, okay so basically the sender can only encrypt the message the sender can only encrypt but the receiver can both encrypt and decrypt yeah yeah you are right okay but uh, but i uh, haven't ever seen an example of this with private key and public key not very familiar with that so we actually we don't encrypt it so when it's uh, let's uh, hello yeah 
so am i audible yes bhagwat i can't quite hear you uh, bhagwat i think it's an issue with his connection but you can yeah you can explain uh, so am i audible now yes yes you are you are uh, so uh, we actually we don't encrypt it so when we send it across uh, through whatsapp so let's imagine it as whatsapp and so the uh, it automatically gets encrypted but from our side and then while it reaches the receiver it automatically gets decrypted from the receiver side using his own private key so he doesn't know that it's being encrypted or decrypted thank you bhagwat uh, kashyap uh, yeah sir i have a question go ahead so uh, so like i have a question for bhagwat sir Please so in his, in his uh, the uh, sing uh, like uh, the first one like i forgot the name of it so uh, in there you said uh, he said that both the sender and the receiver have access to the same key so will that be safer than the other one so no uh, the symmetric key uh, according to my uh, so i think that uh, i personally think that uh, uh, so the asymmetric key cryptography is better than the symmetric key cryptography because they both will share the sender and the receiver will share the uh, same files and maybe the uh, sender might have evil intentions or something like that and he might also try to hack the files which the receiver has so i consider that the asymmetric key cryptography is more safe much safe okay thank you if i may just add on to that uh, so if in if anyone gets the uh, cipher to the symmetric uh, key cryptography they can decode it right bhagwat yes sir uh, right? the so it's not basically the cipher so it's it will be a key so suppose if i'm converting let uh, alphabet so hello in like i said in the first slide so into Uh, a long series of numbers according to their alphabetic positions so a person needs to have the key to it so he'll write down a b c d f g until z and then he'll number it so if he has that key then he'll be able to decipher it right so that's that's what i meant yeah so cipher is not the right word so he needs to have the key of how to, and whoever has the key has the access to uh, you know the information so it's less safe in that sense yes right okay yes uh bhuvan uh yes this is uh, sangeeta uh, along with bhuvan uh, bhagwat was an excellent presentation i just wanted to add one more information uh, that is uh, you might have also come across captcha the image captchas that is also one form of uh, visual cryptography so i just wanted to add that information that is also since you were pointing out about alan turing Uh, this is also uh, the earliest of the algorithms for this was developed by alan turing and this captcha basically means completely automated public turing test to tell computers and humans apart because these days many uh, algorithms are uh, there or uh, probably like the smart bots which can uh, 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 second like a human and uh, make entries so to prevent that we have this captcha mechanism so this is only an info it was an excellent talk keep it up thank you so uh, if i may just uh, ask uh, uh, sorry it, it was sangeeta right uh, yes yes i am sangeeta yes. sangeeta uh, so uh, would you have any idea why these days the captcha is coming uh, you know it's it's more to do with identify trucks and road crossings and traffic signals and you know parking yeah. uh, tickets and uh, earlier it was not okay so is it is it something to do with getting data from the users because yes, is, auto auto driving cars uh, that coming. is mainly because now ai is coming into a big way so more the data is there actually all these algorithms uh, are capable enough to detect uh, from even by uh, image recognition object recognition all these uh, algorithms are capable of detecting so to make out we actually need more uh, information to be uh, mined from that available data so which is anyways not possible by the algo uh, existing algorithms which is not in a way uh, matching the human capability that is why that uh, uh, captcha is being now coming in a big way thank you 
so uh sorry i have a <laughs> because in it, it it's uh, it's an interesting thing um, so this uh, uh, the, this captcha thing is is for the security purpose as well as for getting data from collecting data from the users for the sake of ai not data uh, exactly it is information. not basically to collect the data it is to know whether a human is uh, trying to access the data or it's the right. algorithm because right. uh, algorithms are now uh, coming in a big way and they are able to manipulate the data right right from okay. the, because there are lots of uh, images available from these right. images uh, the low end algorithms itself are able to find out uh, my information and use that information in the wrong way yeah got it yeah thank you thank you thank you uh sharvesh yes um so captures are basically like to identify if we are bots or robots right i mean like humans right yeah is that a question sharvesh yes thank you johan okay uh, bhagavat if a hacker uh, if i had an otp and a hacker uh, a four digit otp for example it only needs 24 combinations there are only 24 possible combinations uh, okay if a if a hacker had access uh, to this OTP, okay so if i uh, if i had left it enough time would the hacker be able to, uh crack the otp and then uh like access my info so it basically depends on the seconds the otp is giving so if it's uh la like if, if it's about 59 seconds so you're saying like about 24 combinations right yes no, no that's only if you have a certain given digits if uh, yes. only if a hacker knows what kind what digits are there in the code otherwise you have lots of digits yeah so it's basically upon uh, like uh, only the number of digits are given so it may be six digit or eight digits you have 100 combinations in uh, if you have a four digit thing so if you leave it for around 10 minutes because one of the otps uh, it stays for 10 minutes would, would you be able to crack it so basically uh, so if it's for 100 combinations maybe he can use uh, maybe he can program any software or might the chance that even if it's 59 seconds uh, he can decode it if, even if it's a four digit number so it's based upon uh, how fast the program can do but what about what if it's 2400 then it would not be able to do it right so he might yeah he might give the program like uh, based upon the number of digits so if it's uh, he might not know the number of digits so when he hacks into it if he finds it's four digit and he has six digit programmer then he'll take a lot of time to do it so if he's programmed it into six digits and then even if it's really six digits then he might uh my he might crack it yeah so if, but if he had a four digit thing and he had to uh, and then uh, he but he and he knew that the digits would be from i from one to nine then uh, he had a program to for four digits would he be able to crack it before 10 minutes uh yeah i uh so can you repeat again Okay, so uh, right now there are 2,400 combinations for just four, uh, four, four random digits between one and nine. Yeah. That is uh, including one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you left, if there was an OTP that would last for 10 minutes before resetting, would a hacker using a program for four digits be able to hack into the OTP and uh, take your data? It might depend upon how much fast it can go. So if it's where the program is very fast, you might be able to. Okay, so how fast is the fastest program? So that I am not that much sure. So I am not. Okay. I'll research and let you know. Okay. Uh, Sai Charan, you have a question? Yes. So can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 you, were, yeah you were speaking about the uh, captchas, right? You said that it's to differentiate between humans and robots. Why? I, I just have a, have this doubt. Why can't uh, robots understand CAPTCHA? Uh, so, basically, I think so. So, uh, I think, so under my impression, I think so. Basically, the robots are just, maybe, I'm not sure. So, maybe the robots maybe just 
program to hack into it so they might so if they come in the obstacle of capture so they might not know how it is but if they are programmed to identify these so uh, so then they then they can cross the hurdle of capture okay uh, so we have a few more hands raised let me just take one more and then we'll move on to the next speaker in the interest of time and others if you have any best response you can put it on chat sidhar okay so here is my last doubt yeah okay okay so it's again related to the otps okay yeah. uh you 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 said that hackers can use brute force method to crack into codes brute force method yeah, yeah. and actually uh, and actually I, i think i have a doubt about it yeah so then one is okay so if there are many so if there are so johan's question was basically the answer and okay i was uh, i need to okay so you got your answer got my answer basically <laughs> okay thank you siddharth uh the others who have raised hand uh, would request you to kindly uh, excuse me uh okay uh, uh, uh bhagwat can i stop sharing your screen yes sir sure. okay. okay so thank you once again bhagwat for that wonderful presentation and you covered the field of cryptography in quite detail and i i loved the part of the history of cryptography of how it started and how you uh, you know you went about it so my question uh, just just one quick question to you uh, and then we will move on to the next speaker is how did you get interested in this topic of cryptography if you can share something on those lines uh, was and uh, you know uh, yeah that's it. that's it so sir uh, i had this book for of the memoirs of uh, sherlock holmes so i le- i read the adventures of the gloria scott so i got interested in that message so after that i left it then i read uh, a book called as a to z no sorry uh, magic tree house fact tracker so in it uh, about world war 2 so in it uh, uh, it was mentioning about the co oh, cipher device called as enigma so i got more interested in it and i researched on the fields of enigma and then i moved on to cryptography and stigmatography that's wonderful the bhagwat keep it up and keep reading and uh, learning more about the subject wish you all the best thank you sir